Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take a look at the damage from the historic derecho storm that hit Iowa and other parts of the Corn Belt. We'll show you how agriculture is providing a purpose for some people with special needs. USDA provides updates on a second CFAP payment. And we'll find out why barley growers are transitioning from six row to two row varieties. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. The president visited Iowa this week to survey damage from the historic derecho that hit parts of the Corn Belt August 10th. He has approved some federal disaster aid for Iowa, but the total agricultural losses are still being compiled. I followed the storm path to see the damage firsthand. I think what's hard to get your head around is the scope and the scale of what's happened. With acre upon acre of downed and flattened corn, Iowa Secretary of Ag Mike Nag says the derecho could rank as one of the worst storms in the state's history. As you look at where the storm path went across the state of Iowa, it essentially hit the, the middle third of the state. 36 counties were hardest hit, totaling 3.57 million acres of corn and 2.5 million acres of soybeans. Some of these fields are a complete loss and they, and they shouldn't have to be harvested. And then you've got fields that are going to be somewhere in between that, that uh, you know, they'll still make a crop. Crop insurance adjusters are in the field, but it's too early to estimate losses. I, I think two, three weeks before we get a pretty good number. And again, a lot of it will depend on how much of it adjusters and producers are in agreement. While the true losses of this storm may not be known until the combines roll this fall, some estimates put corn production losses at hundreds of millions of bushels. In fact, the range is from 200 to 400 million with varying yield loss. I would say on a third of it, boy, it wouldn't shock me if it's 80% or better. On the middle third, maybe half. I, I keep saying I don't have a specific dollar amount today, but it's going to be a big number when you total up all the damage. Fortunately, most of the crop is insured by revenue policies. Well over 90% of the acres are covered, and also most of those coverage levels on corn average almost 81% of coverage levels. However, that may not cover grain quality losses, and there is concern about marketing options. My biggest worry to the basis is, will the co-ops even take it? 57 million bushels of commercial grain storage was also destroyed in tens of millions of bushels of on-farm storage. The president was in Cedar Rapids to survey storm damage following just days behind a campaign stop by Vice President Pence. Both got an earful from biofuel supporters. NCGA President Kevin Ross says they're pushing the administration to release RVO levels that get the renewable fuel standard back on track and honor their promise on the small refinery exemptions getting some resolution of the SRE issue, which we've talked about till we're blue in the face. Um, but this, this thing just keeps rearing its ugly head and, and uh, we want a resolution of this before, you know, before the election and um, it, it's gonna make a difference where people stand. They're also requesting the biofuel sector be included in the next round of COVID-19 aid. Congressional leaders have continued to debate additional COVID relief. However, USDA is preparing the next round of CFAP aid and is considering a new payment formula. I got an update from USDA Undersecretary Bill Northey. We have announced as well that we'll make the other 20% payment. We just paid 80% to start with on, for producers. That was at $7 billion, so we'll make about $1.8 billion more in payments to top up those that original 80% that was paid. So that'll get us close to $9 billion uh, being paid. Uh, we are looking at um, kind of the balance of the year, taking us past that April 15th date. Uh, that would need to be a new program because it needs to have a new set of rules. Congress did provide an additional $14 billion in CCC money to be able to address uh, some other losses. I know that there have been some producers that have been unhappy with how the formula has been done and would like to see that revised in the next COVID aid round and will that be something you'll be considering? We're actively listening to folks, looking at folks, trying to figure out what a program would look like. They have a date in there uh, for cattle producers that sold fat cattle after April uh, 14th. They're not happy with the dates here. We'll see what kinds of additional authorities will be allowed in the future to be able to have some additional support for some folks that 
had some significant losses after that first quarter. USDA has also extended sign-up for CFAP1 to September 11th. This week, USDA announced it's providing flexibility for harvesting cover crops on prevented plant acres. RMA will allow early hang and grazing in 19 counties in South Dakota and 23 in North Dakota on September 1 versus November 1. For a year and a half, it's been wet in those particular areas. And, um, you know, we would hearing forage shortages as well. I've heard reports of alfalfa being grounded out, so just adding to the forage shortage. So we, we felt like it was important that we look at it. North Dakota has 2.57 million prevented plant acres, with South Dakota at 1.24 million. Lawmakers continue to work on a permanent solution. The legal battle over Dicamba continues as the companies lost their bid for a rehearing of their case by a larger panel of Ninth Circuit judges. On July 20th, Bear, BASF, and Corteva petitioned for a retrial, arguing the decision was unfair and unconstitutional. On Monday, the Ninth Circuit Court dismissed the request. The only legal recourse is the Supreme Court, which BASF stated they're considering. You can't make beer without barley, but changing consumer trends are forcing farmers to change the variety they grow. The story of Next on Ag Week. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Let's face it, dogs will be dogs and do dog things, dig things and bury things, shred things, tear things, bark at things. And above all, dogs are going to eat dog things. At least you can support digestive health at mealtime. Exclusive Signature with Comfort Care is a unique combination of researched ingredients to support digestive health today while preparing your pets for what comes tomorrow. Calcine is one of the most effective products at fixing salty, compact soils while reducing irrigation needs. When added to your fields with water, it moves salt out of the root zone, resulting in improved soil structure, better nutrient holding capacity, and less water dependence. Use it in problem areas or in row to improve root systems. Calcine, better farming through better soil. To learn more, contact Jim Erickson at ECO. Upper Midwest barley growers are facing a challenging transition. For decades, they've grown six-row barley for making beer. And with barley industry support, they got really good at it. But changing consumer demand requires they switch to two-row barley, which is still being adapted to this area. Jonathan Knutson takes a closer look in our Ag Week cover story. Typically, we're, we're probably hoping for around 85 bushel barley on the farm. Uh, this stuff, we're probably looking more 65 to 70 this year. Eric Broughton raises barley in East Central North Dakota. He's switching from traditional six-row to two-row barley, a change that buyers want. But he's finding that two-row is tougher to grow. Even in a good growing season, two-row can be a gamble. Six and two-row refer to the number of rows of kernels around the head of a barley stalk. With the drop-off in yield, uh, the quality being there is going to be huge towards um, being profitable on this field this year. And with the two-row Looking across it, we could have done everything right to this point, 
from now until we get it in the bin, uh, we could lose that pre-harvest sprout and it, it could go to feed quality just overnight. And harvest can be tricky too. Although a two-row field can appear to be nearly ready for combining, green tillers can be mixed in with mature heads. Plus, two-row has weaker straw and is more susceptible to sprout damage, says Gary Beck, a Munich, North Dakota farmer and a board member of the North Dakota Barley Council. But there's hope. New two-row varieties are being developed that better fit this area. We have a good breeding program and they've been, they've been switching over for the last four years because they saw this coming. So they're on the cusp of, of making it work for us and giving us better agronomics. The customer is always right, and so area barley growers will continue to transition to the two-row variety. Near Daisy, North Dakota, this is Jonathan Knudsen for Ag Week. You can read more in Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. This week's Crop Stop takes us to central North Dakota where the barley harvest is underway. We found Mike Bender harvesting on the edge of Steele County. He says his malt barley is fairly high quality, but yields are disappointing and so are prices. This year was a struggle with early wet conditions, so we had 160 to 200 acres of prevent plant. But after seeding, it turned dry with no significant moisture until July. Quality seems to be decent, uh, but bushels were definitely low on bushels. We started out really wet, we, we went through a dry spell, and that was hard on our yields through that dry spell. Bender expects protein to be good. He also grows wheat, canola, corn, soybeans, field peas, and has 150 cow-calf pears. A new study shows the impact of COVID-19 on Minnesota's poultry industry. Minnesota is the country's top turkey producer with about 600 farms generating $2.3 million in economic activity. U of M's Bridget Tuck says their analysis shows the financial impact of the pandemic varied depending on the type of farm. Turkey producers fared better than chicken or egg producers as they're not as dependent on restaurant business. Turkey sort of glided through this relatively unaffected. Uh, on the other hand, like egg producers, you know, if you were producing eggs um, for restaurant use, you know, your demand plummeted while demand for eggs in the grocery store, you know, just quadrupled overnight. But Tuck says the impact of some of the markets turkey producers depend on, like summer fairs and festivals, have yet to be determined. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll preview the next 35 years of ag leadership with a young farmer and lawmaker. Something big is here from Valley. Valley 365, the best Valley remote management tools are now combined into this single source, cloud-based platform with all of your Valley irrigation solutions in one secure, easy to access platform, you can streamline your operation and harness the power of your data for greater profitability and a better tomorrow. The time is now to own your tomorrow. Contact KNT Irrigation to learn more about Valley 365. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Prairie offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high-velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. 
experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. It's been a dry week, which has been a concern for soybean producers. How long will that pattern last? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. It's hard to believe we're at the end of the growing season, but we're sort of getting there already. Grain harvests uh, flying through that process. Way to go for the row crops yet. A couple of things going on. The western heat wave, specifically California, but the western Dakotas, large part of the western United States, has been struck by some incredibly high heat. I'll show you where that's going. Another interesting thing we'll take a look at this summer, where it's been wet and where it's been drying, where it's been a little bit of both. And yes, there are some signs of the weather beginning to cool down and segue towards September. Starting off here with a rain anomaly chart. This goes back to approximately July 4th to about the date. And uh, the, what we're showing is rainfall anomaly. You get in the red areas, it's been extremely dry. You get in the blue areas, it's extremely wet. Well, look how we have layers from eastern North Dakota across northern Wisconsin, very, very wet. Iowa has been parched this summer. There's an area of wet just below that down across Kansas, Missouri, into the southern sections of the I-State Corn Belt. So really an interesting mix there. And of course, where we've had hot temperatures upon dry soil, that's causing some additional problems. Jet stream pretty far north. The heat wave is beginning to relax in the Great Plains, but some fingers of that will be spreading out across Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. By hot, we're talking 90s and 100s, so many of these, the high side of the 90s, some spots may approach 100 degrees this week. This is not a big mass of 100 degree heat, but it is some pretty warm weather. The jet stream beginning to dip, cool weather will begin to make an appearance and will start knocking down the temperatures quite a bit toward the end of this week, especially into the northern plains and the northern part of the Great Lakes. As we go on in through uh, the weekend and the second week, week on the map, which gets us into uh, the first few days of September. We continue to see the cool weather penetrate the north, the really cool stuff. This is highs in the 40s and 50s. That's going to stay well up north. But some of this will be 60s, some of this will be 70s, probably mostly 70s. But we are squelching the really warm weather a little bit, starting to make that adjustment into the fall season just subtly at this point. I don't see anything that would bring any, any dangers of freezing weather or anything like that. Dry weather goes from the south central states back to the southwest. Kind of thunder showery, wet at times, probably nothing really excessive foreseen in uh, southern Canada across the Great Lakes down to the southeast. And it looks like one little system could bring some rain snow into the mountains of Montana, but generally a little wet across the Canadian border. Showers, thunder showers, eastern Corn Belt, not as much in the west. And the dry weather will be focused on the western part of the map for the next couple of weeks anyway. We have products that no other companies have. That gives us a bit of an advantage and a bit of an edge and it provides some security to our customer base that we've been here, we're here to stay, and we want to still provide these new innovations to the customers today. It's cold granulated products where we're putting together multiple nutrients. We've got products in our microessentials lineup that contain sulfur and zinc, and we also have products on our potash side, which contain boron, which is a newer product for us, which is called Aspire. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. North Star Ag is proud to add some exciting new products to their lineup this summer, including Meyer Manufacturing Forage Boxes, Meyer's Equipment Manure Spreaders, H&S Beet Carts, and Summers Manufacturing Land Rollers and Tillage. This August, North Star Ag will be moving to a convenient new location just off I-94 in Tower City, North Dakota. We look forward to seeing you there. 2020 has started off where 2019 left off. 
with a lot of uncertainty and concern. Is your farming operation ready to take the volatility this year has to offer? Do you have a marketing plan in place to take advantage of opportunity? Are you finding it hard to separate the noise from the news? Talk to the professionals at Martin Ag. We can help you make sound risk management decisions that will help your operation survive during these unusual times. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. For Ag Week's 35th anniversary, we're profiling leaders for the next 35 years, including Michael Howe. He wanted to be a news anchor, but his career path led him back to the farm. Howe is also using his Capitol Hill experience as a state legislator. Emily Beal talked to him about his goals. Michael Howe is the fifth generation on this Cass County Farm and Seed Company. Our forte has been wheat and barley. Howe didn't always see himself on the farm after graduating from NDSU with a communications degree. I thought I was going to be on the 6 o'clock news sitting behind the desk. Instead, he went to Washington, D.C., and he worked in ag policy for Representative Rick Berg. After two years, Hal joined the North Dakota Corn Growers Association. Then, in 2014, returned to the family farm. But he's still putting his government experience to use. He represents District 22 in the state legislature, which is home to a lot of farmers and also major ag businesses like RDO, Titan, Bobcat, and John Deere. I've realized in my policy work in D.C. how much the federal government really can control agriculture with regulations and, and laws. That's something I kind of have a passion for. Howe says he's very interested in ag technology, which is developing at a rapid pace. We all know what farming looked like 35 years ago. I can't imagine what it's going to look like in the next 35 years. And so and just even the last decade, how much it has changed and expanded GPS and drone technology. All of it, it's going to look rapidly different in the next 35 years, and uh, it'll be very exciting to see how that goes. With the landscape of agriculture always changing, Michael Howe is excited to see where the industry will take him next. With Ag Week, I'm Emily Beal in Cass County, North Dakota. Michael and his father are also managing partners of Howe Seed Farms. Well, the governor's office brought home the championship again this year at the Iowa's Governor Charity Steer Show. Governor Kim Reynolds' husband, Kevin, won with the steer owned by Tyson Van Glant. The event was held at Iowa State University as the state fair was canceled by the pandemic. The show has raised several million dollars to help the Ronald McDonald Houses of Iowa. $3.8 million. So that's, that's a phenomenal number over these last 38 years. The show was a bit different as it was invite only. The auction also allowed online bidding and raised $254,000 for the charity. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to a special farm where the staff skills are growing. Keep your equipment in the field when you need it most with parts from Titan Machinery. We carry a full line of high quality Case IH parts designed for optimal performance and durability. We also carry alternative parts options at lower price points with rugged designs for a great mix of affordability and performance to fit a wide variety of makes and models. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today or shop online at www.titanmachinery.com. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH parts leader. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Ag Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Ag Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Ag Week podcast is the show for you. I'm Jenny Garth. 
And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There's a small farm a few miles north of Moorhead that does much more than raise produce. Farm in the Dell of the Red River Valley employs people with disabilities to plant, grow, pick, and sell vegetables. Rose Dunn recently visited this special farm. We have, let's see, probably about 90 different types of vegetables out here. Farm in the Dell of the Red River Valley is located on 30 acres, five miles north of Moorhead. It's part of an international program that employs people with disabilities. That is an organization that just encourages the concept of giving people special needs the opportunity to thrive in a country setting. Executive Director Alyssa Connect says about 25 people with special needs work at the farm along with supervisors and support staff. And the farmhouse on the property is used as a group home for some of the workers. We're able to take them out here and just see how far they can go. So some of them it's growing something from seed, seeing it come to fruit and picking. Other ones they're actually driving tractors. It's a nonprofit funded largely with donations and sales of their produce. In fact, the land was donated a few years ago. The garden is six acres and the rest is rented out to help cover costs. Kelly Simbaluk has worked here for two years and he says there's lots to love about this job. Probably hanging out with friends more. Um, the planting and maybe the boxes. The boxes are CSA subscriptions where much of their produce goes. The rest is sold at area farmers markets. The crops are grown chemical free. Now see how this is kind of soft here? That's how we know it's ripe. This is Nick Vogley's first summer working at the farm. He says he likes everything about it. It's just a fun job. Feels happy to give to people and stuff. And the operation just continues to grow. Next year, Connect plans to add a U-Pick strawberry field. They're planting a fruit tree orchard, and they're hoping to build some high tunnels to extend the growing season. North of Moorhead, Minnesota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. For details on volunteering or a tour, go to the address on your screen. And thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.